good evening, everybody. It's Monday. We got through Monday, so it's time to celebrate um, with a little bit of Fed talk, a little bit of forest talk, a little bit of TTOTC talk. So um, I would like to welcome the chat room. We already have uh, many people in here. So hello, hello. all. Good evening, um, everybody. Uh -oh. That was me. I, I got it. <laughs> okay. I was going to say it's me or you or someone. Um, I think it might be me too, though. Hold on, because I was listening to that one poker thing. Okay, mine too. Sorry, I had um, extra extra conversations going on. Uh, not just in my head, it was actually me. <laughs> okay, so um, I want to say hello to everybody, and I've been saying hello as we go. So hi, everybody in the chat room. Um, and so tonight we have, of course, well, I'll let everybody introduce themselves because they're probably strangers. Um, and Mike, you might want to tell us you're all prepped for boots on the ground. I hear you had a really <laughs> relaxing day. So how, how how are you doing? How'd that go? And who are you? So I was at the mall for a while today, and you guys will find out why at the end of this program. But uh, I went and had a pedicure done because I thought, why not? So I posted it on Facebook as a joke and said, getting ready for boots on the ground. And you guys know who I am by the hat. Kyle Lazar's on YouTube, which is what you're watching right now. So please, everybody, subscribe and like the video because we got a lot more coming. And Super Chat is on. Super Chat's okay. on. Super Chat's and always on. That's what bought this hat. I feel like a superhero every time you say that. Can you keep <laughs> saying that? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> so I am Dan. I am, go by Copper Dan in uh, a Fen, Fen world here. I am from Minnesota. And that's all, all I got for now. <laughs> Okay, and he's a wonderful artist, and here is his art yeah. both here and oh. there. He has some art that's for sale um, that is related to the Forest Fen Treasure Hunt and actually has some really cool stuff inscribed in it. And like, if you see an F, it's not just your imagination. <laughs> um, and so um, you can talk more about that later, but I just wanted to pluck that right away. What's oh. the, what's the um, website that people can go see you at? Uh, CopperElements.info. Okay. And, and your piece is still on eBay, right? What would they need to search to find your uh, Warm Waters Halt piece on eBay? Um, easiest way, just type, go to go to YouTube, type in Forest Fen, and scroll down through the maps and the books, and you'll eventually <laughs> find a piece of copper artwork on there, and that would be mine. Nice. So nice. An Anna Graham just said, so Copper Dan is a 200-foot searcher. <laughs> okay, let's just get the elephant out of the room really quick. So, um. Um, everything's marketing, right? And so I'm going to come clean a little bit. First, um, Copper Dan listened to the last um, YouTube show that I said, and Copper Dan has every single TTOC, TTOTC aberration. And he called me and he's like, what? What did you do that for? <laughs> that heist it up. It's going to be fun. I don't think he has every single one because he's not going to be going into some of them. But it's fun to just hype up and say, and when we said, who is the person that actually had the maps? And we kind of like scooped it and then halfway towards the end, it was me and Mike. Um, so the 200 foot searcher, let me put out a little bit here. The 200 foot searcher has been somebody I've just been discussing with different searchers for months. I happened to put something on Thor because I actually thought in a weird way that I pay for a forum that I might be able to post on. And it has hundreds of responses. Some of the other forums have gone very serious um, and they're talking very serious about how that's cheating, et cetera. There is uh, the chances that somebody it, that doesn't know that they're the 200 footer that I would approach them and say, you might be, do you want to come on YouTube? Is the chances are just almost none. So I don't think there's consensus on who they are. And it's just a, it does sound so cool, but okay, let's all just take a deep breath. It's not going to like break everything loose. Some people have asked me what the break loose quote is about. Um, I'm not quite ready to, to discuss that yet. Maybe I've teased it too much. And I just want to apologize up front that those of you, I guess I just take this as a hobby and really fun. And some people take this as their lifeline and this is their mortgage or this is their what and they're really upset and I just want to apologize I didn't realize it would get this heated and there's some people that are just really over the top and I apologize for that so um, I think Thor's taking it for what it is and you know we're, we're rolling with it but um, let's all just take a deep breath and have fun in the off season and are there going to be some announcements yeah but um, let's put it into perspective it's not the treasure chest it's not gonna like 
oh my gosh, it's going to be gone tomorrow. Some people said, don't say that because it sends people into harm's way and you're putting people in the snow. I don't think I am. If someone wants to go and get in snow and they're an adult, that's on them. So I just take me with a grain of salt. So as you go through today, TTOTC, if there's even one thing that Copper Dan misses, that means I sensationalized for no good reason. And it is not Copper Dan's fault. So totally is Copper fault. Dan the 200 foot searcher? No, because oh, here's okay. the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> the 200 foot searcher in the research that I have done has never been on the forum. Some people are really upset because they have told me um, that they're the 200 foot searcher and I'm oh. going to out their solve. Dan probably if thinks he is the 200 foot searcher. You know, I mean, so does everybody. I'm the 200 oh. foot searcher. Guess what? I never searched before. So people are. A little obsessed, we, I think. We mm. do not lack confidence in it. Just like who was the gut feeling? There was 30 people on Thor that said, right. I'm the gut feeling. Right. Before is talking about me. Um, I'm not talking about any of you. And some people were really hurt. Like I was judging their solve. And who are you to say? I am nobody in this in this hunt. I don't even have a full solve right now. So let's, again, let's all take a deep breath. Let's I will just say this. Holiday. Just remember, everybody, when K-Pro says she's going to contact the 200-foot searcher, it's the 200 foot searcher in her opinion. Remember my opinions video? We all have opinions <laughs> in her opinion of who she thinks is the 200 foot searcher. Doesn't mean that is the 200 foot searcher, searcher but, but just to make it clear, if you've ever emailed K-Pro, you're not on her list. Is that a true statement? You're <laughs> not the 200 foot server. Now that's going to piss people off because they think they are the 200 foot searcher. I know. But guess and, what? You you're know, not. You're not. <laughs> I know. But just to be nice to everybody and thank you opinion. for those of you that have, in my opinion, those of you that have like talked to me in the past, it's just, you're not the people that are on the list and who cares about the list? It's not a big deal. Let's just kind of roll with it. I do have to say if there was any, <laughs> Illinois ghost is a three foot searcher. Illinois goes. We have talked so many times. Not on my list, but who the heck am I? It was just, I'm, that's, it's, let's just roll with it and just have some fun in this off season. Again, I think we're already getting cabin fever. We want, uh, we want spring to be here before we know it. So anyway, I've been kind of ignoring the chat. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway. Um, Are you done yet? I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. No, actually, you I have apologize a couple of things a lot. Today. I know. And, you know, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so let's see. I, I tend to make a lot of people angry and I don't mean to. And that's what the reason I try to apologize to say, if you're that angry, obviously it's something I've done because there's some people that have wasted a lot of their life that they can't get back. Just hating and commenting and get just get ignore it that's all you can do is just ignore it. i know I, and i did respond and i shouldn't have responded and so i take ownership it's on <laughs> me and let's move on okay so um let's go on to um we have some things to talk about what am i spending my time on i will tell you um different property type if you happen to have any data and I don't want just here, I know it is not on Indian land or if you actually have data, I am starting. I have um, worked the first day on um, the um, the difference between lost and abandoned and the different categories of property. And then that's going to take the next step. I'm going to go through all of the different types of property and then bring it to the community. And, uh, you know, I, I do want to bring to everybody to say, here is what I think. And then also add in some of the Fen quotes. Um, some people have given me some, some quotes. Um, I love it. That's great. Um, so if you want to email me at kpro3 at aol.com um, or hit me up on Thor, um, I'm going to compile something. I think Justin's presentation was so effective. I'm going to do something like that. It's going to probably take me a few weeks. I'm spending time and I'm doing some traveling. I'm traveling again. I'm a traveling fool. Um, this so, holiday. so you said if you have if you have data, define data. What do you mean? You want people you to email you have, if... If. Yeah, like if you have the regs that say state park land, you cannot have abandoned, blah, blah, blah. And you actually, I want the actual paragraph okay. um, or the reference to the state regs or the national park regs, national forest, uh, tribal land, et cetera. So um, you're looking and for regulations. You're not looking for people's opinions. You want to see it in black exactly. and white, right? Okay. Right. Well, and I think the community wants to see it in black and white. And then we can, this is where we'll come to the community and debate it away. Um, so I think. 
um, I think that's that's kind of the, the philosophy. And so I'm going to be doing some research over the Christmas break, um, which will be super fun. I, I get a few days off. So this will be fun. Um, so if you have something great, if not, I'll do it all myself and then bring it hopefully in January. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's see. Um, Thursday, some people have asked what's Thursday. We definitely have decal. So if you were on last week for the Jingle Bell Rock, it was found. It was found within, I think, about five minutes that the winner and decal actually watched the person drop it because they had figured it out. There is a lot of controversy around it. If you think I sensationalize people, this story, I'm not under, as, there is so much incredible drama and someone asked and decal confirmed there was a gun involved there was the radio station involved all three o'clock in the morning in the middle of this rock and there was an altercation it is and decal tells the best story so if it's just decal unfortunately if it's just decal we're gonna love it because he tells such a great story if it is um his name is whiskey if whiskey comes on it'd be great he's taking a lot more heat shocking um, I know how he feels. He's taken a lot more heat than he realized um, with people are calling him cheaters because they you're not supposed to watch him put the rock down, even though that doesn't say it in the rules. Facebook's kind of lit up um, over this and the radio station's kind of been lit up about it. So anyway, um, we're going to have him on on Thursday. Definitely decal. We're hoping to get whiskey as well. But if you want to hear the ending to a crazy story um, and decal has three videos that are already out, we'll probably show the videos of beforehand waiting watching the guy actually put it down and then decal actually has a flashlight and it's like it's right here man it's right here and he runs over and whiskey goes and gives him a hug first and then gets the rock and then there isn't one of the altercation right after that but decal tells such an awesome story um so that's thursday let's see is there anything else i think i i i covered everything so do not that hold long. go ahead yes no, no. Tell I was going to say, do not hold um, Copper Dan to what I have said Copper Dan's going to be, because you know, I just, I, I hype up stuff. Sorry about I that. I know. I had my headphones on today, and I'm working in my grinding booth, and all of a sudden, Capro, I hear, you know, I'm listening to last Wednesdays or whatever, <laughs> show it at the end. I'm like, sure, she's hyping me up. I'm like, what? what? Uh, <laughs> like, no pressure. No pressure I'm like, you did not say that. And at the end of tonight's program, in about 30, 35 minutes, we're going to go over the winner of the T-shirt design contest. So everybody can see that. Yeah, and you'll yeah. see some things. And it'll be, and we'll go over um, World Series of Fen. We have some developments there. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff. And we will break off and say, okay, this is the point where we go from content into some of the fun stuff of the chase. And so we'll transition, but we'll take Q&A along the way. So um We'll, we'll have you all here and we'll break in. So here's what I would like to ask as we are looking at, so everyone and Poem Purist, I saw you follow me down. I'm sorry you sent one back. You don't have that. You can't follow along. <laughs> um, but if everyone will get their TTOTC book out, if you have one, um, I will try to show what he is talking about. Um, but, oh, and so Mike has his. Um, and so here's what we're going to do. We're going to just start at the beginning. I will say Copper Dan has a lot more of the, I think, the more interesting aberrations more than misspellings and things if he's and we're starting at the beginning and if we start to pass something that you're like wait there's a misspelling here or something you want to note note it and i will do what i do best and interrupt copper dan immediately no not immediately uh, when he takes a breath and we will say okay this is also one um but he's already told me a couple of them and i think they're really really good finds um so, and I think this is um, important, especially for people that are studying this book. And for anyone that doesn't know, I have about four or five of Forrest books. Um, they're, every single one of them does not have one aberration except for, well, except for his three memoirs, but um, TTOTC. If you look at his previous ones, and he had an editor for this one, so many think it's intentional. There's so many. What does it mean? Well, um, we can guess, but what do you think, Mike? Well, no, I was just going to say, what has Forrest Fenn said? People said, how many clues are in the thrill of the chase? And he said nine, because there's nine <laughs> clues in the poem. But then he said, when it, people asked him subtle. how many hints are in the book, he said a couple. This is what I remember, if you guys can correct me. He said a couple. And then there's a couple aberrations that live out on the edge. Those were his exact words from what yeah. I remember. So yeah. we're going to talk about some of those possible aberrations today. Well, and he has said subtle. And I think when some people say, well, there's a, there's a Lewis and Clark 
chapter. So that means it's Lewis and Clark. I don't see that as subtle. Some of the stuff that Copper Dan has seen is like, oh, it's this person rather than that person. Um, Norman Rockwell, definitely. Davio, we're going to work on it. And I've had some people interested in doing a panel on the illustrations and the Rockwell drawing. Um, and so we're just starting that research as well. So that'll be a future panel. Um, so Copper Dan, with no further ado, and hopefully I have I have rectified some of the misnomers <laughs> I have put out. Uh, no, we're good, we're good. <laughs> okay. So You're on, about Dan. two months ago, I read this book, obviously for the, like this seventh or eighth time, but I read it really slow with my computer and I took, and I did a basically a book review of the whole book and I started fact checking as many facts, a lot of them are in the beginning, that I could find. So right away, he does tell us that he's going to embellish. And um, so I took him at his word. And <laughs> so the first one is right away in the preface for states that President Eisenhower said that he was bald because his brains pushed his hair out. In fact, okay, stop for a qu quick second. You're on which page and which paragraph? I'm in Just the preface. So You're in the preface. So page four. Maybe. And there are, Hang on. Yeah. I'm coming. You're Page. either four, six, or seven. Oh, boy. If you have it this way. If you don't, I that's did, okay. I didn't highlight it. I have it in my notes. I'm sorry. I don't. Okay. That's okay. Page, page six, second paragraph. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. There so. you go. All right. So, Forrest, again, states, he said... Uh, uh, President Eisenhower said he was bald because his brains were pushing his hair out. In fact, that is not Eisenhower that said that. It's the Prime Minister of I Italy. Help me out with the pronunciation, Mike. Was it Bersconi? Bersconi. Sil Silvio Bersconi. And you, so if people can look that up, President Eisenhower did not make that statement. And I apologize with that one. I did not skip hmm. my source. It's It's on Google. That's interesting. Course, Why would he put the wrong person in? Just like he does with the wrong story. And uh, yeah, what is he trying Why to tell us here? Yeah. Now, do you have any guesses that you would like to throw out, Dan or the room, if you have found this one and thought, "Why did he do that?" Is there anybody that wants to take a guess? I, or are we I looked up as I, I as I just Google President Eisenhower. I'm like, did he have anything to do with national parks and and and, and right Yellowstone or yeah? No, it was not him with Yellowstone, of course. He was a war president. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. I there, never knew that. The, the, there is something there. And I think as we find out more, I don't have anything to add right now. But there, that's why I took the notes, because eventually I will find something else. And then you can start to put a case together. Okay. Well, and the cool part is we will give um, – Copper Dan is on Facebook. He has a Facebook page. So we'll also get a discussion going um, if if – um, that's something that kind of takes fire. I just thought this mm -hmm. was going to be an interesting subject. Hi, Steve Gahagan. Welcome. Okay, so keep going, Copper Dan. Copper Dan. All right. Um, I believe we are still in the. <laughs> we are. Yep, I'm still in the preface. There's a lot in the in the preface. His good buddy Eric Sloan. Um, so here is a big. So Forrest stated that Eric Sloan died of a heart attack on a street corner, waiting for the light to turn green. So there's a couple different sources. According to the LA Times, an article in the LA Times, Eric died while walking on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. So that's kind of close. Uh, Wikipedia tells a similar account, but goes on to say a woman saw him go into cardiac arrest while holding onto a street sign. Um, EricSloan.org tells a different story. Eric died on the steps of the Plaza Hotel. Hmm. And I just put a note. So who's correct and why so many different accounts? And Forrest says he was standing on a street corner waiting for the light to change. Yep. Hmm. Waiting for the light to turn. Does it say green? Let me look. Green. No, it says for yeah. the light to change. That's what I'm reading. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So could that be one of those things? And we don't know. Is he pointing to Eric Sloan in his time with Eric Sloan or, yeah. You know, well, I, that, then you go down I, the I, rabbit hole of the Eric Sloan paintings and is there a clue in one of the paintings and I don't know. Yes, and the rabbit holes are fun, just like Try the Wheel is, Mike. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I like the Eric Sloan uh, rabbit hole. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. I've got one more thing to add for Eric Sloan before we go any. Um, so this one's really weird. Forrest says Eric Sloan was married <laughs> five times. Wiki Wikipedia says Eric was married seven times. And ericsloan.org says five. But then another site I found, uh, Weather Hill Farms says six. And that is coming sourced from his last wife, Mimi. Okay, so here is something, you told me this one earlier. So here's something I want to throw out. Could there be a difference between legal marriages and those that he may have had some sort of ceremonial? Um, I know I know somebody who had a first wife. When she passed, they didn't legally get married, but they have been together 25 years. They call each other well, husband. Common law marriage. Common law marriage. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. something like that. Did uh, That's what I was thinking. This could just be an aberration that is unintentional. Maybe not. Maybe the, the 567 means something. Um and which one says what, but I, that's one thing I, I was trying to think through. Um, so and that's again, one to throw out. Again, what, again, is what, what does it all mean? Yeah. What no, does it all mean? So treasure yeah. getter said, go to page 15 and read line number two. I thought it was funny because line number two says, question myself about what lies just ahead. And he thinks for us to saying the lies that are in the book, what lies just ahead, the untruths. <laughs> that was kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Dan, I think that we need to ask um, Nalika <laughs> what the answer Eric is. Sloan Eric Sloan Sloan I wonder how many paintings she has now. Oh, she got some more, I think, for Christmas. So I, I saw on her Facebook. So yeah. um, Eric Sloan said he only married housekeepers because every time he got divorced, they <laughs> keep the house. That's in the book. Yeah, I think that's, that's in, in the book. book. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so funny. Uh, I won't go there. I have a really funny response. But um, <laughs> why can't we marry the map to a poem by running a line under begin? WWWH and to the X of the map. That's what Larry says. Um, the green light at the end of the Great Gatsby. These are all interesting. 7X lights would be a lot of cold. I like that. <laughs> um, so, okay. Um, okay. Let's keep let's keep going. Okay, so those are that's just in the preface. That's fabulous. So, so we're now through. We're, I don't have anything more to the uh, the preface to add. So we'll start. Okay, why in. don't we why don't we pause for just a second? Is does anybody in the chat room have anything they want to discuss on the preface other than the the prime minister versus um, President Eisenhower? And that's a blatant error. So I think there's something to that. Um, but where Eric died, I think that one is. There's some accounts one way, there's some accounts another, yeah. and then the four, five, six is some accounts one way. Like the blatant aberrations are the ones that are the most interest of me, but that doesn't mean everybody. Um, I believe the book was created of stories he previously wrote for the wrote up to 20 to 30 years. Maybe Sloan was already married five times when he wrote that story. Deep thinker, that could be interesting too. Maybe at the time. Oh, that's true. But he had a full editorial team. This, I mean, there's a lot of errors, and the editorial team would have fact-checked all of those things. But that's a really interesting perspective. Um, so, anyway. Um, here's the end of his rainbow. What did I say? That. So then we go into important <laughs> literature, right? Yep. Yeah. Let's you go to Brian. Yeah, there was yeah. a comment, but it's been retracted. So I saw oh. it. I won't comment on it. Let's just keep going. <laughs> All right. Um, important literature. I'm looking at page 11, uh, about two thirds down, beginning of the paragraph. Finally, I just tossed out. It was toss those beauties in the trash, trash basket under my desk and looked away. If Robert Redford had ever written anything, he could probably have done it better than the guy who wrote The Great Gatsby. Interesting story. Robert Redford has he did write written some books. He did write some books, and one of them is the most interesting that I found is called The Outlaw Trail. Mm -hmm. The book is about the West, and I left myself a note. I'm thinking of reading it. I should probably buy it, but... Hmm, because here's, yeah. here's one thing that's interesting. Um, Illinois Ghost is in the room and Illinois Ghost asked him, he got one of his books and he asked him, is there any clues in this book? And I don't remember which one it was. It could have been 17. No, we'll, I don't remember which one. Mm -hmm. And I asked if then clarifies, do any of your books other than the memoirs have any hint or clues to them for the treasure hunt? And he said, no, that one's up on Thor. You can get the exact mm -hmm. words. But he didn't say other people's books or other people's right like the codex and, and Robert Redford and others. So the outlaw trail. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, why two different drop caps? I don't know what that what means. What's he mean by yeah, drop I caps? Say, do you know what that? I don't know. Julie Smith, um, ask it a little bit differently so we can understand it a little bit better. Um, we're just we're missing why two different drop caps. Maybe there's um, something in relation. So we're still on page eleven. I think that one's a great one. Do you have any thoughts? Oh, so you're gonna get the book and then you'll come back and tell us all about it, right, Confer Dan? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah, sure a lot of people your... out there had the Outlaw Trail. They probably already read it. Probably. I my. My guess, if you could just go, I've done this with books, just go online and read the outline of the book. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you need to go buy them. Like I went out and bought Catcher in the Rye and read it. No, I don't <coughs> need to do that, but. Wait, you did what? Yeah. Uh, I've never read the book, so I guess I'm missing yeah, out. Well, maybe I will send it to you and yeah, do I have, I, 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 know, I, have, a I have the codex, I haven't actually read it, but I also have Flywater and I haven't actually read that either. So. Well, and this is, pre I think I lost you guys. Preston has, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh, you, you freeze have, up? We can hear you. Copper Dan, are you well, there? If you need to get off, I'll send you the invite again. Or just go back to the same. Oh yeah, go back to the same invite. Just click the link. Okay, so as that, we have plenty of. At least he's um, smiling. <laughs> yes, yeah, when you left, the drop caps are the large brown letters. Why use more than oh. one in the section? Um, he, did he use more than one? I thought it was the beginning of every chapter, but I could be wrong. No, you know there. Um, I'm gonna wait for Copper Dan to come back. There are sub chapters that use it, and sub chapters that don't. I believe, and I think Copper Dan has some um, well um, thoughts about that. I don't know if he'll share them. I'm sure somebody can um, put it out there. I thought somebody said if they take all the uh, those large letters, it forms a message or something, but I haven't yeah, done it myself, so I don't know that that's no, true or not. Talk that oh, is he talking talk. about that? Oh, see, I didn't even that, know. Okay. You, yeah, I think okay. we talked about I've it before. I've heard about that before. Um, Julie Smith is talking about in the preface, it's an A and a W. Um, I think it is very interesting. We'll see if Copper Dan, uh, he may not want to put it out there, but there is some anagrams that are based on all of those letters um, that actually anagram perfectly to something. So we'll see if he, when he comes back, um, if he is going to be willing to talk about that. But that could be a reason why they needed that extra letter. There he is. Copper Dan. He's back. I'm back. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, so so when I'm when I'm on the road in a hotel room with my cell phone, we're just fine. When I'm home with the internet, <laughs> problems. Okay. Your kids are probably know. on. I tell my kids, everybody off, everybody off right now. That um, could be what's going on. <laughs> okay, so I don't want to put you on the spot, and it is okay if you say no. One of the questions from the chat room is they thought it was interesting in the preface there was that big capital A and big capital W. I thought, and it might not have been you, but it, I thought it was. Um, there's some anagrams that could be with all of those large letters that have been analyzed Were throughout, you the, the, book. That, throughout was, the book. That was not me. Who the heck was that? It was somebody My, over the years. I've heard different people say it, but I don't know what the message is. Some people have said, if yeah, you take so all those letters, I don't know what the, the message is. Yeah. The large letters and in uh, the preface. I know who we, I don't know if I want to, I know who yeah, it is. I we just, don't know if we want to share it. Yeah. Don't share it. I don't want to share it. I know yeah. who it is, but how about tell me afterwards. Yeah. If it is somebody, or tell them and they could contact me. They might not want to be in the middle of um, chaos. Um, right. So there's, there's a term for that capital letter, and I'm trying to look it up and see what it is. Um, usually you see it in the Bible. You see the large letter at the beginning of a chapter. <laughs> Iron Will is like, I'm going to read the large letters and see what we come up with. I'll have an anagram. <laughs> there you go. Um, I will say there was a pattern. There was some that weren't used, and it was based on. So something in the book. Um, since it wasn't you, Copper Dan, I don't, I don't know. I can't remember who told me. Um, and so I don't want to put it out because if it's something that was confidential, I. But uh, Mike, I know it was after a show or before a show that it, it came out. It was. Yeah, it and was, I know. It was, but it I'm was not. After a show. I'm not talking about that okay. person. I've heard that from somebody else before. So, but oh, I won't okay. say either way. So other people well, have, have come up with that. Yeah, I say once I hear from two searchers, I, I'm okay putting it out, but. Okay, top for Dan, keep going. All right, this is not an error. I just wanted to throw this out there really quick. Um, so Forrest referenced J.D. Salinger dying um, as he's writing important literature, and that is actually, he died January 27th of 2010. So um, how old was Forrest then? Was he still 79? 
Well, this goes back to your thought. I don't know that, but I, this goes back to your thought of did he have updated information on Eric Sloan and how many, how many wives? Well, this shows you that he's in this right. section. He's yep. up to date. And well, just, what it does, what it does show when he talks about he throws catcher in the rye in the trash where it landed on the top of a Time magazine. If you look up uh, 2010, January 2010 Time magazine, there's a double helix DNA on the cover. Mm -hmm. And in um, uh, Forrest Finn's Treasures Galore Facebook page, there's a whole long conversation we had on that. And, uh, and also in that same Time magazine, there's an article on Indiana Jones. So I thought that was an interesting, fun oh, tie, tie in. I, yeah. I subscribed to Time magazine just so I could look up that time, particular Time magazine a long time ago <laughs> online. That's good marketing right there. And the capital letter in the beginning of a chapter is called initial or drop cap. But initial is the term that I was thinking of. They call it well, an I, initial letter. I think she said drop cap, and we're like, what yeah, does that mean? that is a term, too. <laughs> we have come full circle. That yeah. was the technical term. Julie Smith is smart. And initial we now or have drop all. cap. <laughs> nice. All right. Okay. Um, just touching real quick. Uh, page 18 and 19, um, I actually took the time to count the kids, the people on the bottom, and there happens to be 118 people on the bottom of the page, and there happens to be 118 elements in the periodic table. There's a whole Cut other... Cut it out. For us no, there isn't. <laughs> All right. No, there isn't. You're saying it rat matches the same number? It really does. Oh. I counted, you... I counted it three times, and I think somebody else... Has done it in. in Are verifying. you including the teachers or I'm just the children? Everybody on the bottom of the page, not the kids up yeah. in the. So everybody in this photo, everybody here, including Mr. Fenn, every teacher, every. But not the kids in the window, right? Not the kids in the window. Have we there. seen mm. the original picture to see if he had to cut one out or something? That would be I, interesting. I would like to see that. Oh, okay. Come on, treasure hunter group out there. The. The 118 of you that are out there, let's let's see. I know a lot of people have gotten original 1936 photos. I'm sure it's out there. Um, okay, real quick. Deep Thinker says Forrest said the Time Magazine thing was a metaphor. Oh, I I'd been... love to know his. I'd love to know his quote. Where did yeah, he say that? I didn't know. I've never heard that before. Or, yeah. I hadn't heard that, and that would be that would be fabulous to know. Um, okay, so right. that that one is really in, now they've. <laughs> circled and 118 people in the chat room somebody said <laughs> that's interesting okay yeah that's, what is the chances um are the ones that are circled it doesn't lay out exactly like the yeah table the table. lineup isn't the same dan is it no yeah. no i just took yeah, yeah yeah and put a red dot as i counted kids i put a red dot on everyone's head and i got done and and then i double checked it and because it, it came out it comes out to 118 um and i challenge someone to go to go do it themselves it's a pain in the ass to do because they're, they're just all over the place because well, if, Alex... if the way they were standing lined up also to the periodic table then my head would blow up but good oh, so i'm yeah. glad that doesn't happen <laughs> well, alan k and that's actually what alan k and i had already asked the question of does it all line up because it would be it well what about if it's just second row fifth over and that's the one circle not that saying that all of them do or maybe from the bottom or the top it'd just be interesting um, that is a clue, 118 in the chat. Yeah. Oh, yes. It is an absolute clue. We We're line this up. It's pointing so out wild. aberrations. We're not saying they're clues or hints. We're just pointing out things in the book that are interesting. That's all. Right? Okay. William wants to know, why did he circle the kids that isn't mentioned throughout the book? Oh, well, those so were his friends, right? Skippy, uh -huh. Kasser, Eddard, Pat. I don't know. I think I, th I think I think he has said those are just friends of mine that he circled, but I don't know if they're mentioned throughout the rest of the book or not. I've never really done a search for those names. Oh, okay. uh, somebody's caster. If that's how you pronounce it, someone someone did a search on it. Um, talked to to Janet with Treasures Galore. They oh. there was a con. I don't remember the conversation, but he grew up to do. There's there was. There was a whole long thread on it, and it was kind of interesting, but I didn't jump in the rabbit hole. Okay, and Janet, I would love to have you on. I keep asking. Yeah, you. Janet, you come on. Really good information. Well, I, there's, it's a double-edged sword, so I understand that, okay. uh, Janet, I'm going to keep trying. Okay, keep going. We're now on. Okay, so we just finished that fabulous photo. Uh, All right, where, I'm jumping to... Um, I, you know, as far as errors 
I didn't really find much until there's something that interests me in jump start, jump starting the learning curve. Uh, Forrest tells us Miss Ford tried to teach Spanish by speaking Spanish, but then later in the chapter, um, when he was trying to sneak out of class, he would sneak out while she was writing Spanish words on the blackboard. So he contradicts himself. Say it again, jump starting learning, learning curve. Jump starting the learning curve. Forrest yeah. tells us in the beginning of the chapter, Miss Ford tried to teach Spanish by speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. But then later in the chapter, when he's talking about jumping out of the, um, the window and sliding down the, mm -hmm. when you get, uh, I can't remember, when he was sliding down, he, he tells when he was trying to sneak out, and I gotta read here. She, he would sneak out while she was writing Spanish words on the blackboard. So, I mean, he just kind of contradicts himself on how she's teaching. I, I don't know if there's a there there. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. That, yeah. But from an 85 15 kind of guy. And then yeah. the other thing on page 24, second line, it says the Snickers around the class, Snickers bar, you know, he says Baby Ruth. There's a reference yeah. to Snickers right there, yeah. Snickers bar. Baby Ruth, Baby Ruth. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about the candy. Right. Robert Redford made a documentary about ancient Indians in Choco, Choco, Choco Canyon. Canyon. Could be a clue. Okay, very Could cool. Be. And we may I have Choco Canyon. Canyon map. I would have to check. I'm not sure. Hmm. I think we do. Okay. There you go. You might have just sold a map. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, and I just want to say on the top of 26, he does reference Thor. I mean, I, yeah. which and, came first? And which in came this, first? The in forum this, or... Yeah, and the same sentence he says, "Well, I didn't have a clue about what we learned." I mean, he uses the word "clue" when he says "thanks to Thor." It's just interesting. Then a lot of people go down the comic book rabbit, rabbit hole because somebody said yeah. there was a Blaze of Glory comic books, and uh, I went down yeah, that one somebody, big time about five years ago. Yeah, and I have too. And there is one searcher that has shared her solve with me, and it is all based on comic book. And somebody asked me, "Can you tell me which ones?" She is out on the forums. I won't because she has not. She's put her solve out to many people, but she won't until come she's on the show. To, uh, no, I don't think so. I've no. Um, so maybe, but I don't think so right now. Um, so well, it I, makes sense when he says, "Give the the let a kid re read the poem." Yeah, and then Marvel, Marvel gaze, Marvel. Marvel yeah, right. Comics. Marvel Comics, right, right. I mean, and Thor, yeah, I know it all. Thor. And then he talks about the Hulk later in here too, or somebody was a Hulk of a man. I mean, that's a reference too to the Hulk. Could be. So that's okay, there. So Did he do it on purpose or not? Yeah. Okay, so. Panel Wikipedia said it's rumor baby Ruth was named after Grover Cleveland's daughter. So, so there's a reference. Eisenhower, Grover Res, Cleveland. Another reference to a president. Right. And that's what I, I thought with that was maybe it's something to do with presidents and rulers, which he references. Yeah, with Frosty. Frosty the ruler. And then and then in the beginning of the book, something about to the dirt I am caliph, but to the caliph I am dirt. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of discussion of urinating, peeing. I don't know what the chat room is up to right now, so let's just keep going. I don't, hey, I don't, I don't have the chat up, and I'm kind of glad. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good thing. I'm like, okay, you guys, um, have uh, fun. Julie Smith has got a good one. She says, "I pray." Uh, Forrest Fenn says, "I prayed for D's," and the D is missing in the word knowledge on his belt. Right. So that's kind of right. interesting too, how it all ties yeah. together. Uh. Well, and somebody did, somebody went and found all of his um, grade reports from all through his life. Yes. And he actually did not get as bad a grade as he reports from what I understand. Darn it. I, I, I missed, I missed my highlight on that. Yes. That, yeah. Someone went through it and double checked. He was, I mean, and he did go to, I think it, with, you know, in, in stout hearted men, he talks about, where he, I think he actually did go to college for a period. I don't know that he, he, did. he, that did. he finished, but. He did not. And so some people have given him a hard time. It's like, we know you went to college. I think when he says, I, I, I didn't go to college, he meant he didn't get a degree. So if you've mm -hmm. gone a couple of years or caught a couple of semesters, doesn't mean, I don't think that was, was as intentional. Um, but he has said that and we have proven, or there has been a lot of compelling evidence because somebody went and got his transcripts. Um, I don't know how they got it, but they got his transcripts <laughs> and he did mm -hmm. go to college for a short period. There are some people out there that 
are amazing at getting information. Mm -hmm. It's I don't they're, know. They're researchers. That's right. They're good. Well, and that has brought up an ethical debate with some people is um, what like death certificates, birth certificates, his like, is everything fair game at this point? Like if I'm trying to find a, for a 200 foot searcher and I shouldn't overstep that way, should we be looking up um, family members? Should we be looking up? Some have said like um, I, I, he's a I tumor. Do. Yeah, well, and but I mean, how far you know, is too far? Donnie was married to June, his best friend married his mm -hmm. sister, and right. he doesn't mention that in in the book, but it's really easy to find on the internet, and they got divorced. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Why did he choose to put in certain things and not other things? Well, and so if they aren't there, does he want us investigating those sorts of things, or should they be off limits? When I don't you, know what the right answer is. When but... you put out a treasure hunt, you open yourself up to those kind of investigations. Yeah, is the way do. I look at it. I mean, I mean he knows people are well, going to do it. Well, if you do it. a treasure hunt based on your personal life, I yeah, think that's a little. You different. put it in like a book with your memoirs. Bourbon, yeah, you shouldn't go and like right, research. Right. You, you should. Yeah, so maybe this one's a little different. I don't know. Some of the stuff that, and some people have like talked to friends of his when he was younger i don't know it just i don't know it just didn't seem right i don't think it's absolutely wrong i don't think anybody's cheating i, I wouldn't threaten anybody to say don't do that i just would say i don't know if it, it's all fair game maybe i i don't know will it help is the question it's that's the end of the day is it will it help you and i yeah. don't maybe yeah it's a, it's a rabbit hole those are fun Mm, yeah oh lots and lots of them i mean it fills up days and months and years yeah so if we can't even figure out the aberrations here um can we really figure out um, all the different aberrations in his life um samuel smith the famous samuel smith has said mm. robert rufford reference is a hint okay wow. so if you want to say more samuel smith we yeah. sure would listen to you samuel smith you know. <laughs> okay keep going oh, Go um i got a little something up in buffalo cowboys maybe you guys can help me find it um i know the this this chapter talks about forest again i i wrote isn't wearing any shoes but tells us he loses his shoes it's confusing i remember when i i just put that as a, a note in my in my notes here what page number are we on uh 65 through yeah, 65, 67. 67. Okay. I lost my shoes in the ordeal at 67, the third paragraph, last paragraph. But I, I thought earlier in the chapter when I when I read it, it he would he kind of said he wasn't wearing and I think that's happened a couple of times where he never has his shoes on. I don't know. Hmm. And they call the they call the Buffalo Cody. Yeah, so would you consider that subtle, like Cody, like seeing flat out Cody? If it was, let's mm. say the treasure chest no. was found in Cody, would that be, would that be um, uh, subtle enough, or is that too blatant? That's a little. I yeah. once, I don't know. I, I'm, I think they're a lot more subtle than that, in my opinion. Yeah, Both. it seems to me like it would be. Hang on, yeah. page sixty-seven. Both front wheels had gone with Cody. Try the wheel. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, everybody. Talk about confirmation bias to a T. Anytime you see wheel, you think about wheel. There's Sam Smith. I can't uh, make I it up. It's there in black and white. Both Samuel front Smith, wheels had gone with fixated. Cody. Fixated. Right to yeah. the west of the medicine wheel is Cody. <laughs> you have this cow fixated. Okay. Um, D's, Department of Environmental and Earth Sciences, the college department where anthropology and archaeology degrees are earned. Faith Hunter. That's that's huh. very cool. Well, that Environmental is and Earth Sciences. Huh. Environmental and Earth Sciences. Okay. How about he had a doctor when he thought he was dying then he used pepper in the war when he thought he might die. Two, two, two. I'm not sure exactly. I know where you reference. Well, I don't know. I don't know on that one. Um, let's see. I'm trying to catch up on. I'm, I'm almost caught up on yeah, the. Trained up. The whole Dr. Pepper, I mean, there's something to the Dr. Pepper, and there's the whole 23 ingredients of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I know somebody's entire solve is related to the history of Dr. Oh, Pepper, yeah. um, which I thought he was references a nickel quite a bit. And I know there's a, isn't there a buffalo nickel? Mm hmm. Yeah. 
-hmm. Yep. Okay, so um, our, how close are we? Because we are at the 44 minute mark, Dan. Uh, and pretty much the only other thing, and I actually was more of a, a question. I don't have anything really to add. I just noticed he capitalizes a lot of things in the book that I just like, did you need to capitalize that? Like he capitalizes special forces, not particular group, just special forces, air rescue services cap. And I just wondered if that was a way to, you know, cause there's the home of Brown with the capital B, if he's trying to teach us what to look for. Hmm. But, so capitalization, mm -hmm. punctuation and capitalization may matter. Grammar matters. Oh boy, <laughs> you're getting into controversy. No, I'm kidding. Just um, panel pepper was used to throw the dogs off. Okay. Yeah. So hmm. pepper. Okay. That that nickel yeah. on the periodic table. Michael Forney yeah. says nickel. Yeah. So could be. Um, Okay. I'm not going to so, say it's a clue or not, but this is nickel plated. I'm just throwing that out there, everybody. So, <laughs> nickel. Okay, real quick, is anybody else having issues in the chat seeing that? Like, mine just froze up, and it looks like Heather's froze up, but that doesn't mean everybody else's is. So, oh, are really? you guys still are it you has, still seeing and hearing us? It's not frozen up on me, but that might be because I'm running it. So, I no, didn't get an ad that popped up. I didn't know they had ads in the middle of a live stream, so I had an ad pop up, which is weird. My, I got a separate separate computer running with the chat, and I it, just flipped it up, and it's it's fine. Just refresh okay. it. If anybody ever has any problems, just refresh it. So you know, and start. Anagram it over again. says buffering for five minutes. I don't know what that means. It, Mike, that means it's it's frozen for five minutes. So refresh it, or close down the application it. and open it up again. YouTube. Close it down, okay. open it up again. Hit the link again, in other words. Sometimes it happens. Okay. All okay, right, that's so... all I got. So questions, comments, go ahead and tell Copper Dan how it really is. Yeah, let's just tell him. Actually, you know, I actually thought you were going to go through a lot of the misspellings and things, which has been discussed a lot. I like that you more concentrated on the factual errors. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there, and I, so for the person, I don't know who got the TTOTC at the Jamie drawing. I gave one of them up. I gave the one up with all my notes in it rather than the clean copy that I have right here. Um, and so unfortunately I don't have a lot of those. Um, then treasure hunter says a military man would capitalize those things like cadet was capitalized in some were, So that is, that is interesting. Um, so um, I will say that there are some actual names, some proper names, and I'll go back through to remember which ones it's been too long that are actually misspelled. If you're going to actually name someone in a book, you would think you would get their spelling right. And so I've always thought, is that telling us go and yeah. look at that person? Um, and I don't remember exactly um which, which one they, which ones they were, but, um, I, and so whoever has my book, I'll trade you. <laughs> it's not really worth a lot because my, my research is not as thorough as some people's are. So Dan, I think that was fabulous tonight of, um, some of the different aberrations that he has found. I, um, I don't know if it's going to help anyone, but that's, that's stuff that I've noticed and there's probably more in there that I've, I've missed that'll come out in time, but a flutterby is really a butterfly is really a flutterby. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and Julie that? Smith asked, does anybody have a list of all the misspellings or a place that the list of all the misspellings exist? I know there's some bloggers out there that have put some really good um, information out. Uh, K pro concerning the draft cop caps. I found that there are too many M's and W's to make coherent messages. But iron, if Perhaps there's someone... maybe you discard the duplicate letters. Just off the top of my I, head, I'm thinking maybe you discard uh, duplicate letters. There was certain letters that were discarded for a different reason from what that one searcher. Oh, oh I I <laughs> I remember who it was. And he, you don't want he to is say. actually well, he's in chat, and if he hasn't spoke up at this point, I yeah. will ask him if that's something that we can share. Um, but it did come up to an interesting word. But I do think that's probably something he. I know. Uh, just thinking about it. Um, Copper Dan, the chapter is named Lewis and Clark, but Forrest said in the chapter he felt like being in the mountain with Russell Osborne and not Lewis and Clark. I don't know who Russell Osborne is. Isn't, isn't there a book about Russell Osborne? He was one of the mountain men back then, right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying because he mentioned Russell Osborne, does that mean something? You had the book? Oh, you're looking at Too Far to Walk? No, somebody else is asking oh, about gotcha. something in Too Far to Walk, so I was going to... Um... Oh, that unintended clue, which could be in the forward or might not be in the forward. Well, and um, the forward... I, I, I think when he references, like when he references a president, 
he's not repre referencing that particular president, but maybe because a president is a, is a leader. And you'll notice throughout the other book, he'll talk about other leaders like his bosses, the one that drove by with the Cadillac and fired him. And before that, mm -hmm. he, he thought highly of him. And then after that, he didn't. Um, I don't I don't know what to do with it all yet, but I know it's, it's right. slowly right. coming together. Yeah. OK. Um, at the very, very end, I have one oh six one shot asking for me for one of us to read the forward of Too Far to Walk. At the very, very end, once we're done with everything, I have the book, I have it out. Um, and of course, you know who is in um, <laughs> baby, It's Cold Outside. Yeah. Um, I will, re since it's three pages, I don't, some people won't probably want to stick around for that. I will read it at the very end tonight. So 1061 shot, hang around in about 10 minutes, and we will definitely, I will definitely, I don't know if you guys want to stick around, uh, but I will read that for, for everybody so, since I have the book. Um, okay, so let's talk about a few. This is where we're going to transition from the content portion, which was fast. Fabulous. And Dan missed nothing. And I didn't sensationalize at all. Good He's job, so Dan. Wonderful. Good job. Good job, Dan. Um, and we're going to transition to all of the other fun things in this. Um, the t-shirt contest for the World ah, Series of Fan. Contest. Should we wait okay. till the end or do that now? Actually, we didn't call it a t-shirt. Oh, yeah, we did call a it design, a, a design contest. Yeah, the design contest. And I will say there was a really strong runner up number one. And I will email you. I thought your design was great. But there was a clear winner. Uh, there was consensus. And so these shirts uh, will be available. We haven't figured out for sale and all that, but we did get a prototype available. And so you will see for the first time, scoop in tonight, what that t-shirt will look like. I will tell you first, if you RSVP with me, you will get a free item at the poker tournament, unless there's like 30 more people that put in. But we think we can actually put one free item this will not be the free item, but we are hoping to have it for sale um, mm -hmm. at the poker tournament. Some people have said, I can't make the poker tournament. Could I still buy items that would be available there? Yes. Yeah. Um, but we're working on that right now as we speak. So this is hot off the presses. So we thought of giving uh, everybody a free T-shirt, but we thought of something else instead. But you got to come to the poker tournament to figure out what that is. So the reason so, I was at the mall is because I had this T-shirt made, and I'm actually wearing it right now. <laughs> oh, we have a male model available. Right. He's just bought a pedicure, which we need to see <laughs> the shirt on you. Come on. All right. Are we ready? Yeah. All right. Yes, we're ready. So the okay. winner um, uh, of the design contest was... Beth, Genetic Blend. You guys know Beth. Genetic Blend on the forum. She's a very talented She's artist. So What's that? She's what? brilliant. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. She also won Jenny Kyle's gold medallion contest. So she submitted this design. Are you guys ready for it? Here it is. Mm -hmm. World Series of Fen. It's Forest on a playing card. It's yeah, I love it. And there's a yeah. lot happening in here, and I think we need to do a vlog on each of these pieces because she emailed me to say what each of these means. Okay, so there's the Omega, there's Forrest with his cowboy hat, um, there's brown trout, there is a waterfall over here for the heavy loads and water high. I mean, there's so many different things. These are the coins in the treasure chest. There's all the these different thing. items that she incorporated. And I don't know if you can tell, but right here, there's a postmark. And the date on that postmark is January 26th, the day of the poker tournament. Nice. So Holy I've got God. another shirt right here. I did make two. And oh, on the back of the shirt, going to, Mike. yeah, I wonder. <laughs> this is going to go to Capro. On the back of the shirt, we have, of course, the famous Forrest Fenn quote. So this is the T-shirt. They will be available for to purchase. We don't know how much yeah. yet. Um, you know that's not a Forrest Fenn quote, right? Well, I heard he took it and, and um, adapted it. He changed it a little bit. Is that true or is that not true? I don't know. When I, I suppose I should have touched on this in the in the book. It's the beginning of a of a song. No, oh, darn it. I don't know. Somebody said Keep that. Going. It, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. find it. But in other words, it's a Forrest Fenn quote because it's from his book. Let me put it that way. Now he may have taken it from somebody else, but I thought this is a quote that he changed a little bit. So I could be wrong. So, Beth, good job. Uh, Beth gets her choice for winning the design contest. She gets to choose a copper coin, a silver coin, or a map. I'm not sure which one she's going to choose at this point. Um, but thank you, everybody, that submitted a design. And uh, we will have details on the shirt. They'll be for sale for the people that are at the poker tournament, and they'll also be for sale for anybody that wants to order one, and I will ship it to you through the mail. So this is it. 
Yeah, that, I think it was. It's awesome. It's a I want one. It is pretty cool, right? <laughs> Well, and what we're thinking of doing, and we're still working out all the details, is trying to take pre-orders so we get the right sizes for people that definitely want a certain right. size. And But we're going to be ordering very quickly to have them for the poker tournament. So we're working all that logistic. I mean, we're we're through maps as far as I'm concerned. I know Mike's still like no. 20 behind. But <laughs> I've emailed everybody that emailed me. I got the emails back, but I still have some to pull and get out. So. And, hey, Mike, some yeah. people are asking about the quote. Can you read that quote from oh, not yeah. your back, it's, but the other it's one? It's from the book. It's in the very beginning of the book, right? Isn't it the beginning? Yep. Li life is a game of poker. Happiness is the pot. Fate deals you four cards and a joker, mm -hmm. and you play whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. So we thought that was appropriate for our World Series is, of yeah. Fate. That is from I'm Waiting for the Ships That Never Come In. Word for word? Well, it's a log. Actually, if you go, just... Type, type that into type Google, it in. okay. and it'll, it'll bring you waiting for the ships to never come. It's long. It's a big, long poem, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, that's just that's just a part of it. Gotcha. And, Copper Dan, you're starting to freeze up again. I don't know if you're permanently frozen up or not, so just wanted to let you know. Um, so here is the part about the poker tournament we are back we went actually down to 15 up to 18 i think actually i got one as we were talking we're at 19 please email me at kpro3 at aol.com and the reason for that is is two things one we're right on the bubble of needing a third table if we have to have a third table that there needs to be additional dealers brought in otherwise people will go sit on the waiting list and when someone gets knocked out, somebody else will come in. Mm -hmm. um, the other reason is we are going to provide a free item to only those that have RSVP'd with me. So I am going to take all the RSVPs that I have gotten about a week or two before the tournament and say, are you definitely coming? Because we are providing an item that I think, even though the shirts are super cool, is a yeah. little bit um, more, um, I don't know, special. I don't know what the right, cool, whatever the right um, terminology is. Um, but I did want to go over just really quick. Um, we are going to do something informal and Mike and I are going to actually talk after this and this week about doing some sort of informal dinner um, on Friday night. Just get together. People want to get together. Fabulous. If you don't, that's okay too. But I think a lot of people are getting into town by Friday. We'll um, just pick and, a restaurant and a time and say, whoever wants to show up, show up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then some people are interested in actually doing something on Saturday morning or Saturday. I will tell you, it's not going to be morning for me. It's Vegas. So it'll be late. Yeah, morning. we're not. <laughs> there will be no 930 a.m. breakfast like that was in Santa Fe. That's not happening. I mean, there could be. That's not going to be organized. by. <laughs> well, I won't so. be there. But uh, yeah, there can be. You're right. But I won't be there. We could do uh, breakfast, then, stay up till 5 a.m., maybe something like that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, there. There will be um, the poker tournament is of course at seven and right. then after hours there is big differences between different demographics and people in their interest i will say we'll probably just splinter there's going to be some things happening yeah, i don't know um, is it going to be fremont street is it going to be what whatever it's going to be we'll kind of decide when we get there some people are like i want to go straight to the casino some people have said no what if we go and do zip lines some people have said escape room some people have said some other things <laughs> so i'm we're gonna just leave that informal we'll figure um, it out yeah and then i will set up a thread on thor of just anything that's happening we'll get um we'll get updates up there as well um but i am a firm believer that there should be no videos and no pictures because what goes to vegas stays in vegas except the tournament the tournament's okay because that will be nice and tame, well but, you're not supposed to take I, pictures inside a casino so i'm not sure well that's huh, gonna work i did but, not uh, know that maybe we'll okay. sneak a couple we'll see so dan i just i did look up the lyrics i'm waiting for ships that never come in by ernest tubb and the the, the lyrics from his song is now life is only a game of poker and happiness is the pot they deal you five cards in the cradle and you play whether you like it or not. So okay. Forrest Fenn did change it a little bit. And that's what I heard in the past. But I've been, I've been told. And um, just so people know, this was run by Forrest Fenn and he gave the okay because I know people are going to ask. You know, it's his face on here. Correct? Right, but here's Christine. the other piece. Yes, he did approve and he it's very clear. He is making no money off of this. He, right. approved, he has to per copyright laws when you go to any reproduction place we have to get his okay that his likeness has been used just from a copyright whatever legal standpoint that's all i did is said here it is are you okay with it and he said i'm okay but i'm not affiliated he's not affiliated with 
the production, the anything. Yeah, he's not affiliated else. at all. He just gave the okay for us to do it. That's all. I mean, we're taking the risk. If we have 100 t-shirts made, are they people going to buy them? I don't know. We'll, we have to wait right. and see. How much is that t-shirt going to cost? I have no idea because we don't know how much it's going to cost to make them, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. so it'll be fun. thing for me with, with the warm WWWH copper pieces. Yeah. And I put up, and I, for him, I wrote it up on, on the eBay. It says Forrest Finn doesn't profit from these at all. Right. Right. Yeah. Idea. But we wanted to say it out loud so people know. It's like the same thing every time with the coin, with the this, with the that. But still, I want to make it because he made it crystal clear to me when I got the approval um, that this was something. And we'll probably send him one just to say thank you. Um, and so, um, so anyway, that is the... Um, but what so you could do is if you know you want to buy one, email Capro or myself and tell us what size. That would give us an idea of what size is to order. I mean, is it a small for your kids or is it an extra large or is it a 3X? That would help us okay. if you could just say, I know I want to get one. This is my size. That yeah. might work. But again, but we're definitely yeah. thinking of the black with the, the white. white letter. We um, weren't even thinking of other colors at this point. We were going to make it simple like this. So, yeah. I think it looks so fantastic. I'll That's have cool. mine on at the poker tournament. I think we'll see, <laughs> and there'll be some there for you guys to buy if you want to wear if you want to wear them, or as gifts, whatever. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so I think is there any other uh, maps are still available? Mike is still yeah. catching up, so don't fret if you have not heard from him. But also check your spam in case. But um, I think we did a video, so he was just catching up, and we did a video on how to buy a map. <laughs> we got like thirty more orders. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you got a whole bunch out today, but you're getting ready to get a whole bunch out um, tomorrow. So um, hopefully, yeah. and then and then Mike might be taking the night off on Thursday. We're gonna see how that goes. Yeah, yeah family I got town. family in town actually tomorrow, so I got a ton of things I got to do tonight. Uh, hopefully, I'll be there Thursday, but if not, Christy can run it with decal. Um, nine orders went out in the mail today as far as maps. You have your tracking number. I emailed the tracking number to everybody, and I will get to the rest, I hope, tonight. So I've got all these maps pulled right here, and I've got to get them packaged and shipped. So, yeah, if you still want a map, just let me know what you want, fenmaps at gmail.com, and I'll go through, and I'll see if they're still available or not. And they're nice. If people want to know, I think we've sold like 110 maps so far. There's still like 140 coins left. So there's definitely still the silver coin left if people want to um, if people want to order the maps to get the coin. They're still available. And 1061 shot said a hoodie would be sweet. I'm talking to the production people tomorrow. So we do have a minimum order. I'll see if that can yeah, be broken it's... up between T-shirts and sweatshirts. I just don't know that. Oh, Boomer Girl has said she'll be having a 930 breakfast. <laughs> that will be I fabulous. might just be going to bed, Mary, at 930. You never know. You know, that poker room is open. It's not just a tournament. We could go play poker in the regular game or go poker do room. something else. Um, the other thing is what I'd like to do is take pre-orders for the T-shirt. That way we really know what to order, except we're not doing it now because, again, we've got to figure out the price point and all that stuff. But we'll have those details. You guys know that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It was coin, yeah. coin Lazars, then Map Lazars. Now it's going to be T-shirt Lazars. So you guys will get you all the info. Trust me. How do you buy a coin? Um, Covert One, you go up on eBay and you find a coin and or you go see copper Dan, you I don't think, yeah. buy a coin if you order two maps you get a coin for free but you don't buy a oh, coin. oh you're talking the silver coin yeah the yeah you don't buy a silver coin coins. and the silver sequential coins um shannon Utz has some calazars has some i have not focused on and i know there's a few <laughs> other searchers busy. that are going to help it's just been yeah it's just been a little busy we are going to get all of those hidden before um spring before late spring so then it's safe and all of that and we want to make sure it's on the right type of land and all and maybe we need that information about what type of land and could it be buried and not buried and all that yeah, um so. speak, there is currently <laughs> only one silver coin out there that's right you and who has that mean? copper dan who has it i i know the guy yeah i didn't know if you wanted to put that out there or not that's why i say who has it i think it's kind of public knowledge okay and what coin okay. number is that three all right so copper dan did buy coin no silver searcher coin number 2019 number three off of ebay so he has it if anybody wants to float offers to him i have no idea what he wants to do with it but he does have it the other and ones Cover one is in the room and he's saying yes silver coin so dot 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 um copper dan this is shocking copper dan <laughs> and remember the winner of the poker tournament will get silver coin number two 
as a yeah. prize for first place. So uh, and there'll be some other prizes for other places. All the other coins will never be for sale. They're going to be hidden. Now, once people find them, if once they find them, they can do whatever they want with them, sell them or yeah. whatever. They won't initially yeah. be for sale. They yeah. will be hidden or it will be an armchair like next grand adventure, which I still have to work on. Uh, but yeah. I'll get to it. We'll get to it. This will be for summer next year. Speaking of, I did find coin number 617. Did you get it? You have it now? I got it. Oh, that's and awesome. Okay. Oddly enough, I just figured it popped up on there from, from my pleading through <laughs> yeah. the channel, and it was not. It was some guy, and I got it for <laughs> a great, I got it for a great – I mean, I was prepared to spend pretty much uh, – um, Copper Dan, who told you about that? What investigative searcher helped you and okay. said, oh, my you know, gosh. I go on eBay about every four <laughs> hours. You just have to <laughs> in the four hours. And I will say the only time that I have seen Copper Dan very serious, I was like, 617 is up there. He's like, what? And he's like, I'm going to bid on it. And I'm like, I'm going to bid it up. And there was silence on that line. I said, I am just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I think that was the only time you were like, uh, I don't know what to say. I think I'm going to get mad. I was like, okay, I was just that kidding. Is, that is my coin. There is there is probably the other one would be like 673 because that's that's my month and, and, and year. Right. There, now you know how old I am. Ah. And <laughs> well, and Boomer Girl has yeah. said it'll go nice with my C notes, so the she still has silver coin something. number two. She means, yeah, she still got the hundred dollar ah. bill from the <laughs> nice. first poker tournament uh, that was in mm -hmm. Santa Fe. Yeah, so the women, awesome. the women reigned the top champion, and I think that's going to happen. Even though, like, we're going to be out number three to one, I think a woman's going to win this one, and that will actually really drive the end of the tournament of chop and pot. We need to really think through chop and pot. You have and to, all that you can't, you have to play it out because of the, Oh, what? okay. Well, as far as who gets the coin for first place, if, if it's chopped, if people don't know what chop means, it's if there's four players left and you'd be like, we're just going to divide the money and not play it out. Then it goes to chip stack. Whoever's the chip leader at that time would get silver coin number two. And we need to designate that to make sure nobody feels like, because if it's you and I at the end, I mean, I, I don't I'm not chopping. I I, I, I'm getting that. <laughs> right. Point. I think we're playing it out in this tournament. We'll see. I mean, it depends I who's there. But, right. uh, people do have the right. option to chop. Bailey's does that for their tournaments. So. so I'm still working on, on my other half. To, uh, if you can make it. Um, yeah. Copper Dan, you asked me on Facebook if I could talk to your wife about it. Just send me her. <laughs> so I, yeah. I don't know if you want to. <laughs> Tell her you could bring a couple pieces and they'll be for sale right there at the poker tournament. It's job related. You could actually right. write it It's off. a business expense. That's right. I, I told her I needed to go so I can sell some coins. And that too. Oh. Covert One just asked how much for the coins. How much are you selling them for? So you might have to come up with that. Uh, I think those two have talked before. So. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so. Okay, well, um, those are all the announcements and things I had. So, again, if you have anything on the different types of land, um, shoot me a quick email. Um, and because that's what I'm working on right now. And, again, but with the notion, it's going to be something that's shared with the whole community. Um, so, and, again, I just want specific information. Um, I... Unless there's anything else from the room of any questions that you have, I am going to read to 1061 shot. I will read the preface to Too Far to Walk. Oh, okay. Um, the rest of you can go or you can stay. Um, it's, uh, it'll only take me probably two minutes. But um, any questions from the room before we go? Um, Heather Dawn, that's a good point. If you've never played poker, Mike's a great person to teach. we'll have a tutorial yeah we'll have a little get together earlier in the day we'll probably break off maybe two or three o'clock and some people that want to learn how to play poker mm -hmm. it is going to be a texas hold'em no limit that is the that is the type of so if you want to i know a couple of people are looking up and i've sent them some of the best youtubes of how that works um so if and I think you start with 10,000 in chips. I'm trying to remember what that tournament is over there. I think it's 10,000, but I'm not positive. I'm not positive. Well, the, but the, the 1 o'clock tournament is different than the 8 o'clock tournament, so I don't know which that's one a, with the – Well, that's, that's, it goes off the buy-in. For $60, I think you get okay. 10,000 in chips. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, great. So the rest of you, thank you. And if you want to stick around and hear some great words of wisdom as I read um, all of the foreword, it's not too long. Um, it's three pages and it's nice big lettering. I will do that for 1061 shot. Um, but any of you that want to stick around and maybe we'll have some epiphany and we'll give out super secret hints because that's what we do. But thank you, Copper Dan. You did a great job with some really good content and that's 
that's what we're focusing on. So I appreciate that. Mike, anything else before? That's uh, enough. Mike? We got enough going on. <laughs> Let's just get through the tournament. So t-shirts, let us know if you're interested in buying one. We'll, we'll get all those details put together. And then maps, fenmaps at gmail.com. And Mike, you're getting some shout outs for helping me with my chat yesterday. And yeah, so Mike has, and some people have asked me if I understand how eBay works because I could sell Mike's passwords. Oh, um, I nice. Won't, <laughs> I won't do that quite yet. I'll just say, yeah, Mike, Mike put me at the helm and he then went away. And I think he was watching from a distance to make sure I didn't get out of line. But that is because maybe Thursday and there's going to maybe be some other times that I'll go live um, individually. He may go live individually. And so this kind of helps me. I, I now know how to get on by myself which is so let's talk about next week monday is christmas eve is there no show plan for monday or we don't know yet i don't think there will be but we can talk about it and Um, then thursday of next week i mean we'll keep it up in the air if there is going to be a show i will schedule it and you guys will see that it's scheduled and you know what time we're going to go live or christy might might go live on her own whenever she feels like it so make sure you're subscribed and you hit that bell to be notified yeah there were still 70 in the room here we get about 130 or 140 um normally so i think some people like the scheduled time so they can be home but going live was kind of fun and i only anticipated being on for like five ten minutes and then i felt really bad because it Adventure came on just as like the it was an hour and 30 minutes and it was just as we're signing off so I'm bummed out because I I like your videos adventure um so okay so um and Holly has asked can I show the the pages first and I sure will um so we're going to transition I don't know if you want to stay on Dan or not but I'm going to read I'm going to and I I feel a little bad I don't have a little uh, kick my feet up and have a little um fire going um, but here it is, uh, Too Far to Walk, and the foreword, um, this is the page that I will start in at. Is that what you wanted, Holly? Is that what you meant? Oh, your birthday's Christmas Eve. How fun is that? Um, 27th for Davio. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay. Okay, so the foreword, hopefully I get all the words right. Here we go. Forrest Fenn is a national treasure, is a national treasure. He is the Mark Twain of our times, a storyteller extraordinaire and teacher of life. His charm is so appealing and disarming, I decided, based on a single phone call, to accept his invitation to visit Santa Fe and stay at his guest house. When I told my husband I wanted to reroute a trip to allow for a stop off in Santa Fe to stay with a man I had never met, He looked at me as though I had morphed into the character of Chrissy Snow I was playing at the time on Three's Company. His response was, are you crazy? That was 35 years ago. Not only did we stay in Force Fen's guest house, but in doing so, one of the great friendships of my life began that endures through today. Over the years, Forrest has introduced me to a world of art and archaeology I have never realized existed. I real I never realized existed. My original phone call to him was to inquire about a Georgia O'Keeffe painting. Having heard he was one of the premier dealers of fine art, Southwestern art in particular. I'm going to stop for a second. I am now, this is the entire rest. I am now at the beginning of the top of the second page. Um, okay. I know some people are signing off and good night for those that are, I will continue on. Um, But he is more than that. Forrest is a Renaissance man who writes and publishes his own books, collects rare editions, and has one of the greatest accumulations of Southwest art existing in the world, including ancient clothing, textiles, pottery, and jewelry. And he is single-handedly responsible for popularizing the work of the early 20th century Taos artist that were either unknown at the time or lacked exposure. Jo- Joseph Henry Sharp, Leon Gaspard, Nikolai Finich, and many more. Because of the enthusiasm and keen eye of Forrest Fenn, the works of these artists are now among the most valuable and coveted of all Southwest art. That original phone call not only connected me with Forrest and his wonderful family, but lit a fire in my belly for Southwestern art, which developed in an into an insustainable passion and addiction. He swears I stole the Fitchin painting from him and I accused him of snatching Victor Higgins' The Red Bonnet from me. Under the guidance, I have been exposed to amazing people, 
Under his guidance, I have been exposed to amazing people and the most incredible and beautiful works of art in all forms. He also has taken my husband and me countless times to the ruins of San Lazaro's Pueblo, Pueblo with its buried 5,000 rooms to dig in the scorching sun as well as the bitter snow and cold. The elements never mattered to me because I easily got wrapped up in his storytelling and forgot my discomfort. He knows every nook and cranny of his property and exploring it under his foolage brings to life the culture of ancient people. I'm now on the last page. The <laughs> lives that once took place, how they lived, what they ate, how they cooked, and the pottery and utensils they used. We regularly found priceless pieces of ancient pottery complete with the original drawings, as well as countless arrowheads, grinding stones, and bone tools. Each dig, each visit, each meal we shared has forged a lifetime bond with one of my greatest teachers and a dear and treasured friend. There is no one quite like Forrest Fenn. He's a true American, a brave and honored U.S. Air Force Airman, and a recipient of the Silver Star and Purple Heart. I also know him to be a quite, to be a quite philanthropist who runs, a, I'm sorry, a quiet philanthropist who runs the program for disadvantaged children, not to mention an incredible husband, father, grandfather, and philosopher. He has a twinkle in his eye and an appeal that is enchanting. You will drink in the stories he tells in his imit imitatable, losing my eyes, way in his book. And by the time you finish too, will, and by the time you finish, you too will be caught up in his charms. He also has a bit of mischief in him. The most recent being the global buzz he created with his infamous hidden treasure full of gold, causing people to descend from all points of the earth to find it. Santa Fe will never be the same. Last paragraph. He is a regular guy born and raised in Texas with all the charm and appeal of that influence. Down to earth, likable and lovable all that has all that all that being said even though i love him dearly i'm still not giving him his finished painting suzanne summers with her signature hopefully you enjoyed that i don't think i got all <laughs> everything exactly right i fumbled a little bit but that there you go hopefully 1061 your that works for you so okay all right, I everybody. think we're off for tonight. We are a little over. Sorry about that. Thanks, everybody. A little over 100. We are signing off. That's Thursday, nice. Jingle Bell Rock. And next week, we'll see. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Remember the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs>